ladies and dudes, I'm very darn sorry that I took so long to do this very important top 5 list that I need to do for today. And it has something to do with my favorite episodes from one of the most underrated anime series of all time called Basilisk, the Oka Ninja Scrolls. Well, anyway, hi ladies and dudes, this is Rebecca Lynn Barkley, aka Boobop97, this is my review for a day. And today's review, ladies and dudes, well, my friends, it's that time again for another top five list that nobody has never done before. And this top five list that I need to do for today, I, I'm very, I am so darn sorry I took this top five list for way too long. After all, I was too busy on so many other things here and there, but I didn't have time to work on this very important list that I haven't done from this past summer. And it has something to do with my favorite episodes from Basilisk, The Oka Ninja Scrolls. And, well anyway, um, for my latest top five list for today is my top five most favorite episodes that I do enjoy from Basilisk, The Oka Ninja Scrolls. And yes, there's only 24 episodes in total. But I gotta pick only six of them. I got six good episodes that I really do enjoy. From the past close to a year ago. Yeah, I started off joining Basilis in January and then it did end up in June. But I did have mixed feelings with the ending, and we already know that the ending was, you know, a big giant plot hole problem. They did add a couple of plot holes that made no sense to me. I just wish they should have fixed the ending before they could wrap it up. You know, I tried to give it a little bit of a better ending. And maybe that way we can have a great conclusion. But let's go on to the episodes that are really, really good to me. And like I said, I got only six. But there's going to be two episodes that will deserve to be a, in a tiebreaker. Well, if you guys get the picture. So, let's go ahead and do it. So anyway, without further ado, ladies and dudes, let's head on to my top five most favorite episodes that I truly love from Basilisk, the Oka, Ninja Scroll, and yes, there's going to be two episodes that deserves to be in a tie. Well, just a tie. Well, anyway, let, let's get this started. So anyway, coming at number five, like I said, it's a tie. Between episode 11 called Like a Rhinoceros and episode 20, we must see whatever type of flowers together. The reason why I love both of those episodes is because of my two favorite characters in the whole wide world. One is a tomboy girl named Hachisu, and the other is my cute, adorable teddy bear named Shikabu. I really like both of those episodes to death is because of those two wonderful characters that I've grown to love and care. And since uh, Shikabu and Hachisu were the two second best characters who did have such great character development and chemistry. And yes, both of their storylines are very, very sad. We got one storyline of Shikabu, who had a very sad, lonely childhood where he had never got any friends at all, and he is very, very sick because of some unknown disease that's inside of his body. While Hachisu's storyline is that she had a very good relationship with her big brother. And Sally, uh,. Her big brother got kidnapped from some unknown ninja, and 
and he told her just to kill him off along with that ninja. Yeah, I enjoyed both of those storylines and they're very darn sad and I feel so sorry for them for having that a very tragic life. But the best part about Hachi Shu and Shikabu's relationship, they are truly brother and sister. And I think Hachi Su is such a good big sister to Shikabu. Because I think she learned to become a good sub sibling. Uh, I think she learned it from her big brother, and I think she's a really good big sister to Shikabu. Said she did took care of him back at episode 11. You know, during what that big guy had done to both of them. So yeah, on episode 11, they did do survive, but sadly on episode 20, they did die together. While they faced that weirdo fortune teller lady. So yep, I have nothing else to say about those two great episodes. So yeah, episode 11 and episode 20, they deserve to be at number 5. End of story. Okay, coming at number four goes to episode nine of the Butterfly Dance. And that's a, a really episode. Oh, I really love this episode. This is a very enjoyable episode to watch. And the best part about that episode is where the Kogas and the Egos are going to work together as, as a team for the very first time. And I sure hope that Gnosuke and Oboro Wherever they are in heaven, they're watching the brand new generation of Kogas and Egos to finally work together and not face each other as enemies. Since they got their own enemies to face. The evil enemy called the Joshin Clan, they need to find a way to take care of them right now. And I'm sure everybody's most favorite moment in the whole entire episode is seeing Rui, um... You know, taking off her clothes and she's going to face those bad guys in her naked body. Yeah, that was the most surprising anime moment I will never forget in anime history. But also one of the big live alligator moments in anime history. I'd rather call the butterfly dance a big lip alligator episode. Because there's going to be a couple of scenes here and there that does feature some big lip alligator moments. So pay attention to this episode very carefully. Because there is some stuff that involves big lip alligator moments. So I decided to put that episode at number four. Coming at number three goes to episode 14. I don't know what that weirdo castle is called, but I'd rather call it The Weirdo Castle Must Be Destroyed. I fucking love this episode to death. And this is the episode where our heroes need to find a way to destroy that evil castle once and for all. You know that castle that was about to be squeezed or crushed apart by this weirdo creature that came out of nowhere. We have no idea what that thing is. But our heroes need to find a way to destroy that thing once and for all and try to save Japan. So they won't get involved with danger no more. And yes, there's a couple of cool moments that happened in that episode. Like where, um, yes, Hachiro and Hibiki have finally reunited. They did use that Oka technique. And yes, there was another big live alligator moment that uh, Hachiro and Hibiki did use that technique to save Shikabu. I wonder how the heck they did that. They only mentioned that thing once and they never mentioned it again. That was pretty darn awesome. And I'll never forget when the Nimba fly on that uh, Komoto kite of hers and she has a cannon of her own and that cannonball finally went through to that one of those cannons that came from that weirdo castle and then it went to a big giant boo. That was so darn awesome. Oh yeah, um, 
one of my main flaws about that episode is that stupid cowardly monk. That mug was such a coward that whole entire episode. He did he did fire our hero seriously. And that was pretty darn stupid. And he truly disrespect Hachiro and Hibiki. They are very independent characters. You can't judge an independent character who wants to be on your side. So just leave them alone for goodness sakes. You're just a pure idiot. What the heck is wrong with you? Yeah, I hate that cowardly monk. He's just a stupid idiot. If you know what I mean. So that deserves to be at number three. Coming at number two is... Tadanaka's Change of Heart. If I got that dude's name right, who is the, uh, the second grandson of Lord Iyasu? Um, I freaking love this episode. This episode is also pure awesomeness. The best part I love about this episode is where both Hachiro and the Nimba, they both shared a half of an episode. Uh, the Nimba took care of the first half of the episode, while Hachiro did take care of the second half of the episode. That was pretty darn cool. We never seen... Okoga and Iga did take turns and share a half of an episode at one time and one time only. That was pure genius. And yes, there's a couple of cool moments happening in that episode. Um, my most favorite part about the episode is truly in the first half where Nanima has to go on a mission to go to some type of castle. Was it the Endo Castle or something like that? And she did face a couple of soldiers here or there, and she kicks a major butt. And that was pure genius. I like the part where she used those strings with those uh, her weapons, and she killed them off one at a time. That was so darn awesome. And yeah, Hashiro had a really cool moment at the end too, with Saizo's help. Well, check out episode 7 and you'll know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that deserves to be at number 2. And finally, my number 1 most favorite episode that I did do enjoy the best for Basilisk, the Oka Ninja Scroll. And this episode will always have a special place in my heart. Because this episode deserves to be the best of the best. And that is episode 6, where evil clouds began to stir. I love this episode to death. This is my most favorite episode of all time from this underrated anime series. I mean, it had a very well done storyline, beautiful animation, great epic scores. But I think my most favorite part about this episode that I love the best is the moment. There are so many great moments to be found from this very great episode. This episode deserves to have a 10 out of 10 rating for me. I mean, there's a lot of great moments to be found from start to finish. Yeah, just check out episode 6 and you'll know what I'm talking about. Something that really did blew me away big time. And also, this is one of the best time skip episodes of all time in anime history. This episode really did blew me away big time. So yeah, Evil Clouds began to stir. Episode 6 deserves to be my number one most favorite episode of all time. That came from Basilisk, Bioka Ninja Scrolls. And that's my whole tire list for today. So tell me, ladies and dudes, what is your most favorite episode that you did enjoy from Basilisk, the Oka Ninja Scroll, minus episode 24? Well, whichever it is, leave a comment there and let me know. And also want to wish my buddy Adam Gainer a great happy birthday. And I'm going to do my the best I can to do a great peace sign for him. 
I hope I got it right. His peace sign, of course. So yeah, happy birthday, big brother. I love you, dude. And I truly missed you dearly. Amen. So, that is it for now. So, I'll see you guys later, and sayonara!